Okay, well, welcome to everybody who's come on to this Saturday morning webinar, Microcurrents and Consciousness. I really appreciate you taking your time, your precious time to come on and to join me here and to learn more about this upcoming event and to gain some of the teachings right now and to see how it fits in with what you're doing. You know, I believe all of us have been growing and learning a lot and expanding. I, mean, I know those of us who are in these holistic healing arts, there's a lot of very challenging people that come to us that have a lot, a lot of things that are not easy to deal with. And so I know it spurs most of us on to try to deepen our skills and improve the way that we can help them and work in a more efficient way. And so hopefully some of the things I'll be able to share with you today may give you some insights or some ways that you could do that. Okay, well anyway, this subject, microcurrents and consciousness, it's really the new level of how I personally have learned how to use the Accutron and other energy medicine modalities I work with and how to really integrate those with the transmission of universal energy and helping people to heal on a really deep core level, which has always been my passion. So the learning objectives for today's webinar is quite a bit to get through in one hour. The first thing is to gain an overview of the field of vibrational medicine and simple ways you can integrate it into your practice or integrate more of it into your practice. The second thing is to embrace a new vision of root and branch that can help you raise the level of your clinical outcomes. And then to learn about the new level of working with microcurrent. You might call it microcurrent 2.0. Actually, it might be up to 5.0 by now, but really it weighs, if you're already using the Accutron or other types of microcurrent devices, how you can get a much higher utilization out of them. The next thing is the consciousness connection. That's really where my heart is with this, is what you need to do to develop your abilities further so you are a catalyst for profound psychic shifts in your patients. This is definitely something that we can develop, nurture in ourselves. And then finally, how to integrate vibrational medicine, which of course includes microcurrent, with facilitating shifts in consciousness. I consider this a real frontier in being able to effectively treat modern patients with complex disorders. So this is the seminar that's coming up. It's the first time that I've taught a live um, major seminar like this in two years, and I'm not sure where the next one will be of this type. Um, actually, there is a, some other types of seminars I'm planning for next year, but I'll talk about those later. But as far as this one that's based mostly on using microcurrent, these are few and far between, but I'll tell you in a few moments why I was guided to do this. So anyway, it's going to be in Los Angeles, California at the Renaissance Hotel, which is right at the LAX airport. So it's you can get a free shuttle there from the airport. July 28th, 29th, and 30th, again on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday offering 23 CEUs for acupuncturists through NCCAOM or the California Acupuncture Board. And again, today's webinar, I'm going to have an overview of some of the things that will be taught there and give you some of those principles right now. So the first thing I want to jump into is really the highest level of what this is all about. Might as well cut right to the chase. Who are you anyway? You know, this to me is the core of healing in, the, in my practice. I believe that there's a powerful taboo in our culture, and it goes back to a book written by Alan Watts back in the 1960s. He wrote a book called The Book on the Taboo Against Knowing Who You Are. Think about that for a moment, that so much of the pain and disease and so many of the crises we have in our culture, our society, and things going on in our planet, if you really trace them back, the deepest root cause is people do not know who they really are. They're really sleepwalking through their lives on, on some profound level. And so I'm not going to go into the whole spiritual philosophy of why our world got into that state where we're not allowed to know who we are. You know, we're allowed to be successful, we're allowed to accomplish a lot of things, and we're allowed to the iconoclasts that go against the grain of society, you know, all these things, there's a space for all those things, but one thing that children are not imprinted with is this thing about knowing that they are beings of light that are unlimited, having a human experience. And the reason I'm bringing this up right up front is because in my practice now, I feel like the biggest thing I help people to do is remember who they are, and the healing comes from that place. 
and I'm using the tools of microcurrent and light and some other forms of energy healing that I do to help them do that. And I'll share as much as I can about that. So I want to ask you a big, bold question. Are you ready to serve as a master healer? Just think about what comes up for you when you listen to that question. Now, there's a new program I'm creating that this seminar will be a kickoff to, which is called Bridge to Mastery. And it's a, a program to support people who are in the healing arts in coming into a balanced experience of mastery so that you can treat more people or at least treat your people at the highest possible level of effectiveness and really act in a way that you're helping them awaken their consciousness. So to me, there's four elements of mastery for people, for doctors, acupuncturists, and healers. And some of us are strong in one area, but then let's say not so strong in other areas. So just take a look at this. The first area is using the most effective clinical techniques and updating your knowledge of them frequently. The second element of mastery is learning to be a clear channel for universal healing energies. I think most people do it instinctively. They may not call it that. They may call it different things. But it's definitely something you can upgrade your abilities in. It's not just like you have it or you don't. It's something that can be learned. And how to blend that, that ability to transmit universal energies with your clinical tools, which whatever energy medicine or acupuncture or herbs or whatever you're using, body work, to learn how to bring more of that presence to it. The third thing is being in your own self-healing process. You know, there's old, old saying, doctor, heal thyself. And it's so obvious to me that so many of my colleagues in my professions, um, you know, skimp on that. We often put ourselves last and don't take the time to work on ourselves. And taking care of your inner child. How often do we take care of our, just making our inner child feel happy and loved and secure? And then the fourth thing is creating an abundant relationship with money. Again, some people are doing really well with that. Some people are still struggling and feeling like they're barely paying their bills. So to me, these are the four elements of mastery. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do just do something that's really fun is I'm going to put out a poll right now. And I want to explain what a poll is. A poll is something that you can just put your opinion in. It's kind of like voting. And your, na your name is never shown. So your name is, so anything you put is anonymous. But it says, I'm just asking people in this webinar to vote on this poll, showing which of these areas of mastery to you are a high priority, and which areas are a low priority. It's just very interesting and fun to see that. So what you can do is you can simply just, um, you know, click which ones. And obviously try to pick the ones that are, you know, the ones that you already feel like you're doing well with, you could put, you should put low priority, you know, if you don't need to learn it too much. But if you feel like you need more help in that area, then make it high priority. Well, this is interesting. Okay, so just give you a few minutes to do that. And then we can learn from each other when I tell you the results of the poll at the end. And again, you know, this is confidential. I'll never know whose names is saying which vote. These are the kind of things that aren't talked about very much in our professions. So it's really nice to look at it and see what each other is thinking about these things. Because I feel it really requires expanding my mastery more and more to, to deal with, to fulfill what I feel my purpose is and to work with the kind of people who are attracted to me these days. But anyway, um, oh good, it's just like most people are voting, so I really appreciate that. Thank you for participating in this poll. Okay, well, I'll read you the results now, is that for the question one, it's a high priority to update my knowledge of the most effective clinical techniques. 70% um, of the people on this webinar said that's a high priority, 30% said it's a low priority. So yeah, low priority means you feel like you're already doing pretty well in that area and you don't need that much more help. Okay, 
Um, the second one, becoming more of a clear channel for universal healing energies. 90% of the people said it's a high priority and 10% said it's a low priority. Okay, and for taking better care of your own self-healing process and self-love, 70% of you said it's a high priority and 30% said it's a low priority. And the final one, upgrading or healing your relationship with money, 80% said it's a high priority to do that. 20% said low priority. So thank you very much. I really appreciate you coming on and taking this poll. So we're going to end this right now. Share results. Okay, I guess you can all see the results now. Yeah, you can see it for yourself. I don't know if I, saw, I didn't realize that that feature was there. So yeah, now you can see a little cross sampling about these things. So yeah, I really feel it's important to look at these elements of mastery and to find out where you need the uh, support and to get it because this is what really is the core, I feel, of the work I do is working on this. So let's talk about vibrational medicine. Vibrational medicine is the most direct form of the healing arts. It kind of cuts out the middleman. It's putting vibrations and energies directly into the target tissues and systems of the body so there's an immediate, instantaneous shift in the state of that organ or function or symptom. And when you really you know, look, break it down in terms of quantum physics, the human body, if you really break it down, is really just a big mass of subatomic particles with energy fields holding them in certain patterns. And there's and in the quantum field, which means that there's all these potentialities for how we can manifest at any moment and we are choosing one of those particular potentialities, which is called collapsing the quantum field. And so vibrational medicine is the most direct way to interact with people on that level of, again, who they really are. So the human body is that complex network. It's often called the living matrix. And pain and illness are just disruptions, blockages, or distortions in some aspect of the frequency fields of the body. That's one reason why frequency-specific microcurrent has become so popular. Again, it's a very direct modality to work with the systems of the body through frequency. Same thing with color therapy. The reason it's so highly effective and so rapidly effective is because, again, you're, go you're going right into the level of this living matrix and working with people. So the root of pain, whether you're dealing with psychological pain or physical pain, is blockage and resistance to the refusal of the free flow of information and energy in the body. I'll explain more as we go along what I mean by information and energy. Just like a blocked pipe. And so our patients that come to us who are suffering, on some level, this is what's going on. That's what suffering is. It's something in us that chooses to close down the flow. And I use, I use the word choosing because nobody's a victim. We are all creating our own reality at all times. And so the reasons why people choose to shut down their own flow and create suffering are something that can be decoded. So these distortions, after like so many decades of doing this kind of work, I've, I believe that these distortions in our energy field that create suffering and pain are due to agreements that we have made to be less than we really are. Again, it's not knowing. It's that taboo against knowing who you are and there's this complex network of kind of like a pecking order in our consciousness, all these internalized voices and agreements and vows that we have made on so many levels and that we have gotten from our ancestors to be less, to constrict our flow. Nobody ever really forced us to do those things, but we chose to do them because of a lot of misguided beliefs or because of a lot of trauma, basically. So learning how to decode and release these agreements is a really important part of the healing process, and there's going to be a lot of that we're going to be working on at the LA seminar. Now here's a picture of some really nice art from the book Hands of Light by Barbara Brennan. And this is really typical, like when I work with people, like what it's like. Like you could see this person has a beautiful golden aura. Like this, this person in this picture, if this is, you know, typical, say, a patient with having this kind of issue, is really choosing a very positive mode of consciousness and probably meditates or does things. You can see her higher chakras are nice and open in this diagram. Her heart chakras, you know, very nice in throat and third eye. Her, her aura is good, but you see her solar plexus 
has tears in the soul. She's leaking energy. She's losing power through her solar plexus. And there's this big mass of unresolved emotion just clouding around her second and root chakra. So this means that her relationship with her deep emotions, probably there's a lot of resentment, trauma, you know, feeling of not doing well in relationships, having codependence, like a lot of these kinds of things. And so this is what it means to decode, to be able to look at someone's energy field and find out what's really going on underneath the complaints that they're really telling you about. And this is the way I often see it, is that many people are dragging a heavy suitcase behind them full of their unresolved core conflicts. I recently taught a uh, class at the local Unity Church, and there was 25 people came, and it was an organization dedicated to combining science with spirituality. So the name of my lecture was Quantum Science and Non-Duality, and people loved it. And I had nine people sign up at the end of the workshop to have a initial consultation with me because they were so, you know, enjoyed my, my presentation. So I did these nine presentations, these nine uh, free, free initial consults, and several of them did sign up to become paid clients. But what I found talking to those people was that these are all pretty spiritually advanced people. I mean, most of the people attracted to this IONS group are, have been working on themselves and doing consciousness type activities and meditations and different kinds of healing work for decades. I'd say the average age in that room is probably in like 50s, 60s. And yet every one of them, when they opened up to me, talked to me about this suitcase, like what it is that they've never been able to resolve. They've kind of just been dragging along with them that all the healing they've done, all the spirituality and all the study they've done and you know, all the things they've done through their church has not been able to transform that core of pain that they have. They've cleared a lot of other things, but there's something there that is still haunting them at some level. That's the way it is. So, so many of these people search through various kinds of acupuncturists, healers, holistic doctors, in the hopes that they can find somebody to help them decode that what's in their suitcase and help them release that hidden cause of their suffering. And this is what's, for me, this is what's really goaded me on because, you know, I was, been an, I was an acupuncturist for 30 odd years. I say was because I don't actually do acupuncture anymore. I now do biofield healing, energy medicine. And so many times I felt so frustrated with the fact that I was helping people symptomatically, but I could see they weren't really shifting on this deeper level I'm talking to you about. And many times it frustrated me about myself that I, that after all these years of being a healer and doctor, that I'm still dragging my own suitcase around and having these issues that I can't resolve, and I've searched through so many healers and doctors to deal with my own stuff. So it's, it's really motivating to find methods that will help you not only for yourself, your own suitcase, but to help people come to you a higher percentage of the time getting to that core. So here's a really interesting um, perspective that many people don't think about, and that is that Pain and disease is a solution that people create to inner conflict. Let's take a moment to take that in. Why do people create cancer in their body? Because it's a, a lesser of two evils. Having a tumor is a lesser evil than this deep emotional conflict that they've been holding. And somehow, creating more massive tissues and parts of their organs can feel to their primitive brain, their reptilian brain, like a solution. Like, I'll give you an example of that, maybe if this sounds kind of mystical. Um, I've worked with several patients with pancreatic cancer, which, as you know, is a you know, very high fatality rate. One woman I worked with was actually an oncologist herself, and she had grown up in Latin America, and she had a mother who was always goading her to be a very high achiever. Her mother never supported her in just doing simple, playful things as a child. It was always like study, learn, you've got to excel. Like She had a real priority that she wanted her daughter to be very successful. And sure enough, her daughter grew up, went to medical school, got high grades. She ended up at UCLA. She became a psychiatrist, an oncologist, and she had a very successful career. And she actually came to one of my microcurrent seminars, I think, 10, 12 years ago started using the Accutron. And then when I was working in a cancer clinic in Arizona, probably six, seven years ago, this woman showed up as a patient, and now she had pancreatic cancer. 
And as I interviewed her and talked to her, it turned out that she said that she realized that she had never had any sense of like nurturing or sweetness in her life. She'd always been just pushing herself to excel at her work and that she had developed this pancreatic cancer. And as we talked about it, she started understanding that pancreatic cancer is connected with the emotion of lack of sweetness in your emotional experience, lack of too much stress, too much driving, too much trying to achieve. And so this was a solution for her because it stopped her momentum from driving, driving, driving. And I, as I work with her with uh, my PNE balancing and healing, she started taking more time to be with her inner child and do various things that were nurturing to herself. And after about a month of working with her, she moved back to LA and I really lost track. And I don't know what happened with her after that. But I know that she felt so much more, she told me she was so much more at peace and in harmony with herself by doing that. So in that way, that became a solution for her, even though it's not a very smart solution, maybe it's not an optimal solution. So when you learn to decode the inner meaning of patients' complaints, you're much more able to help them heal the root with the conflicts that are driving them. Now, if any of you have any thoughts about what I'm saying, I would certainly welcome you to hit the chat button and tell me your opinion or your thoughts about this. Or you can even say you're full of shit, Darren. I mean, whatever it is, I, I welcome interaction of any kind. So how does vibrational medicine work? True healing occurs when there's a long-term correction of the frequency state of the body into greater harmony with the true self. Again, it's like I was saying, going, acknowledging who you really are. You're a spiritual being of light having a physical experience, and you are choosing your experiences. Vibrational medicine applies corrective frequencies and colors to the body to directly balance, harmonize, or restore the frequency network to balance and wholeness. Now, I know it doesn't seem like a lot of people are choosing their experience, so that's something you have to really delve into yourself. Just look at the deeper meaning of that. Vibrational medicine, here's the key here, it works best when combined with emotional healing and transformation of consciousness. So what's gotten me, even after you know, over 40 years of being in the healing arts, what's gotten me really inspired and motivated recently to expand my practice and to really focus on this and put a lot of other things aside is this understanding that I can use my vibrational medicine tools, my Accutron, I have another light device that uses gem therapy, some other things, some crystals, my essential oils, like to use those tools and combine them with this transmission of higher fifth dimensional energy. The results I'm having are so wonderful with people that it's gotten me, you know, kind of out of semi-retirement and into doing this stuff much more enthusiastically. So examples of vibrational medicine be color light therapy. Each color is a specific code of information that speaks to each organ or gland or chakra with a certain um, meaning, a certain adjustment. And then microcurrent is specific frequencies and polarity patterns which can relieve pain, neuropathy, balancing the organs very rapidly through Mushu technique, improving neurological functioning like peripheral neuropathy treatments, and I'll speak about that in a little bit, and promoting healthy metabolism. Sound therapies, another very powerful thing. In the beginning was the word. I mean, sound is so powerful, and you can work with tuning forks. Um, I, what I do is I actually do toning with my clients while I'm applying color light so that they can learn to adjust their own chakras, learn how to empower themselves with sound. And then homeopathy is another application of vibrational medicine because the frequencies are embedded into a sugar pill or into a water, and people can take it internally into their body and set apart that frequency shift. And then spiritual or consciousness healing would be learning how to be a facilitator or a transmitter of this kind of energy. I just want you to know that I am offering that right now to you. I'm not even trying, but I can feel the transmission of energy coming through this webinar. So if you want to just take a moment um, to take advantage of that, if you have any particular aches or pains or things you're, you're dealing with emotionally, you could just request to receive this in that area. If you feel so guided, certainly welcome to. So. What this really does is it facilitates rapid psychic shifts 
which I think is at the core of people changing their symptoms. So you can use this kind of you know, energy healing by itself, or it can be used to amplify the effects of other vibrational modalities that you are using. This is a picture that somebody took of um, me working on a, actually one of my neighbors. And then I hired an artist to draw in what it feels to me like to be being a channel for universal energy. This, I really think uh, he did a good job with the artwork. So, um, you know, it's, it is like I feel the energy coming in, moving through my field, and then going exactly where it needs of the person. And now if I'm holding my Accutron probes or you know, acupuncture needle or doing uh, acupressure or something, I can feel that energy basically creating a field around that person so that they're much more receptive to it and getting much uh, amplified benefit of it. So the, here's a, a way to look at it scientifically. Human beings are complex creatures. We live on many dimensions and levels simultaneously. So on the physical level, which is what most medical systems are all based on, it's the body. We are physical bodies. We're, we're a complex piece of meat with different biological functions. And then um, on an energetic level, for that piece of meat to be something other than a piece of meat, there has to be energy. So therefore, there's energy flowing through meridians, uh, focus and spinning through the chakras or different levels of energy, and then the energy fields around our body and permeating our bodies. And there's the two-way arrow, which means that our energy body is always interacting with our physical body and vice versa. So the imbalances of energy eventually show up as problems in the physical body if they're not resolved. So all this is, I'm sure, you know, elementary to you. What is worth talking about here more is this level of information. This would be our source files in spirit, you might say. You know, what really, like there's a field of, of information that manifests as our energy body and as our physical body. So this would be consciousness, being, our true self. This is the taboo against knowing is this level. So there's much more, so there was a taboo against this level in our country, you know, for a long time. You know, people that did energy work were really voodoo or persecuted, like people like Wilhelm Reich, you know, was put in prison and all that. So now there's a lot less taboo about the energy work. I mean, a lot of MDs now are studying um, acupuncture, and, you know, there's a lot more research about it. So this has kind of come out of the closet, but the next level to come out of the closet is this level of healing through people knowing their true self. Um, John just said, I'm requesting healing for my left shoulder and arm from medial border of scapula. Okay, not sure of reason. Okay, well great, thank you for making that request. Just simply breathe in the transmission that's coming through this webinar and let us know at the end if it's any better. So let's take a look at how these would apply to the practice of medicine. So the practice of medicine, the matter level, would be physical or biochemical medicine. So that would be you know, Western medicine, body work, certain aspects of what anybody really is doing. And then the energy level, of course, would be vibrational medicine, microcurrent therapy, acupuncture, homeopathy, you know, any of these types of things like that. Now the information level, as far as facilitating shifts on that level, is learning how to be a facilitator of shifts in consciousness. And it definitely can be learned. Um, helping people to get in touch with those hidden conditioning and beliefs that are keeping them um, perpetuating those, these symptoms. I mean, it's been... I've been seeing this for so long that people get great holistic therapies and they get a lot of relief, but the inner seed of where those imbalances are coming from has not been addressed, so they just recreate it in another form or the same form later. So does anybody have any questions or comments about this chart? I mean, how does this relate to what you do in your practice? I'd love to hear from you as well. But anyway, this is, this is the key to what... Um, we're going to be doing in the LA seminar is learning how and ensuring up your knowledge and confidence through practicing this, how you can address all three levels in your clinical practice and do it more quickly and efficiently. It doesn't have to take a lot of time.
see, to give you an example, one of the things that inspired me to do this LA seminar is that back in uh, earlier this year, I was contacted by a Dr. Catherine, who is a medical doctor, acupuncturist from Colorado, and she told me that she's participating in a study with the U.S. Air Force to test out energy medicine modalities that they could bring into the Air Force to upgrade their care, which is you know, very, very good of the Air Force to want to do that. So then she put me in touch with this um, man named Peter, who is um, an Air Force uh, researcher, and he invited me to come to Dallas in April to treat a whole lot of chronic pain patients with the Accutron and to show, like, you know, show me your stuff, show you what you can do. And he invited people from about four other companies that had different energy medical um, equipment to also you know, put it through its paces. So I took, the, I took the invitation, went down on April 10th and 11th, and sure enough, they had people they had brought in from many, many different states who had really severe chronic pain and who had not gotten help from all kinds of different medical and alternative methods. And they put me in a room, I set up my Accutron, and they just had one person after another just come in for, I was there for two full days. Some of them I saw uh, anywhere from one to three times. Usually I had 20 to 30 minutes per session to work with them. And the results were remarkable. And I, I wasn't sure they, they, I would be. I was a little, had a little bit of trepidation because I hadn't been doing much pain management. I'd been mostly doing this emotional and trauma work and so on. So, but I, had the, I found that my results were much better than they had been years before when I was previously doing more pain relief. And what I realized is I had instinctively figured out a system for how to quickly in a short amount of time move people through a process of addressing the emotional and spiritual root and then do the, the, the techniques that give good symptomatic relief. So in a sense, I was working on all three of these levels with those people. And if you go to the LA Seminar webpage, which is on eastwestseminars.com, I have a six-minute video on that page with a lot of those patients doing testimonials about what they experience, and I'll tell you about them in a little bit. So anyway, root and branch is a big key thing that is important to understand to know how to do these kind of treatments. The root of most, if not all, chronic pain originates in the mind and emotions. A shift in consciousness is necessary for long-term healing. And so a lot of imbalances start in these energy bodies, the emotional body, the mental body. These, these are much bigger than the physical body. And if they're not resolved, they eventually precipitate into the physical body. So you can see this picture. Here's somebody that has nice, um, harmonized looking chakras, except his solar plexus is kind of black and yet and kind of prickly. So this means that this person has issues about power, or about not, about what they're doing in their life, about deep conflicts at this level. And so if this is not resolved, this could likely turn to things like stiffness of the joints, arthritis, hypertension, uh, digestive issues, ulcers, you know, there's so many the migraines, there's so many things that can come from a blocked solar plexus chakra. So the root, tr the traditional understanding of root and branch, as I learned in acupuncture school, would be the root would be underlying constitutional weakness or imbalances. Treatments are applied to balance the organs, chi, extraordinary vessels, or the chakras. The branch would be the symptoms that the patients are complaining about and are concerned about relieving. So there's different, in Chinese medicine, which is my main profession, I, I came through, there's definite treatments that are root and some that are branch. Now, the new system that I'm going to be teaching at the LA seminar, I'm calling the microcurrent deep release system. And this is an expanded way to understand the root is that the, it's the emotional level, the negative limiting belief systems and traumatic imprints, usually from childhood. It's things that people took into themselves, into the reality, and then they keep out picturing it the rest of their life. The spiritual level of the root would be accumulated conditioning of the subconscious mind that out pictures in many ways, including chronic pain, diseases, depression, a tendency to have accidents, anxiety and blockages in their relationships and or blockages in finances. 
back in March, I did a 10-day silent retreat called Vipassana, where it was 10 hours a day of meditation for 10 days, silence. And I kind of revisited the teachings of Buddha a lot during that time. And one of the words that Buddha and people from those traditions use was samskaras. And samskaras means the deep impressions or conditioning that are created by our reactions to the experiences of life and that actually become burdens to us psychologically and actually can create all this pain and disease. So I think our medical system needs to do more about understanding some scars and addressing on that level. Now John Sarno is a very well-known MD. He's now 90 years old, he's still alive. And he's just had a huge career, you know, 45 years or so as an orthopedic doctor and working with focusing on back pain. And, then the, and in his older years, he wrote this book, Healing Back Pain, The Mind-Body Connection. And according to his research, he said over 85% of all back pain patients have pain that is emotionally induced. He calls this tension myositis syndrome. And it starts with tension that constricts the blood vessels and eventually starts working on a fascial level. So his system is mainly a lot of visualization and inner work that he has found is very effective for helping people release back pain without surgery, without drugs. My experience is if you take a method like he's doing and combine it with microcurrent and light and energy, it actually is even better. Uh, the results are even faster and people can um, shift on many levels that way. So again, it's the same thing I've been saying about combining the consciousness shifts with using a microcurrent. So again, the branch to review primarily relieves the issues of the physical body and meridians, while the root treatments primarily clear and balance the organs and the energy bodies, chakras. So the chakra system is the link between the energy bodies and the physical body. So clearing has to happen on that level. So color, light, sound, and focused intention are highly effective ways to heal and reconnect the energy and the physical bodies. So like here's a picture from um, that I took in a photo shoot where, again, I'm working on this person had their, their third eye, a lot of the glands, let's say hypothalamus, pituitary in their brain, were under functioning or closed down. Again, it's often due to not wanting to see certain things in their life. People would rather deny some things. That was what would close that down. So I'm holding the Accutron probes with color light and then having the person do some visualizations and I often have them do toning with me certain tones that will open that chakra. So I find doing those kind of more yogic practices while using the microcurrent of light is spectacular treatment. I mean, people get really, really rapid shifts from that. Let's talk about pain mastery sequence therapy. If any of you have been to my past seminars years ago, this is a big thing that I taught, would be a way to treat pain by using a sequence of brief techniques. Okay, we have a comment here. Let's see what this is. Okay, Gail said, can we please get a copy of your notes? This is awesome information. Oh, thank you. Yes, I'm going to send a copy of PDF of these notes and the, and the video recording of this to everybody who registered. I usually don't do that for free webinars, but this one I will. So thank you for thinking it's awesome. I appreciate that. Um, so anyway, the original pain mastery sequence therapy that I was teaching in my seminars was this. You start with the root treatment, usually the Mushu technique, where you just spend a few minutes using color light on the front and back points of organs that are imbalanced. Then circling the dragon with the probes, doing some local distal work with your microcurrent probes. Um, sometimes auricular treatment, very, very helpful for um, pain issues. And then if it's, in some cases, that's enough. In some cases, you would finish with frequency-specific microcurrent or FST or interferential with having the person do some body work or movement to get it into the physical body. So, so anyway, between 5 to 30 minutes, you can go through the sequence depending on what you're doing. And again, it's very, very effective. I taught this for many, many years. I use it myself, and it's a great system. But I've taken it to a new level now. And let's, I want to show you what this is. 
So the microcurrent deep release system, the next generation of sequence therapy, combines highly effective microcurrent and microlite symptom relieving techniques with facilitation of psychic shifts in your patients to address the real root of what there is really going on with them. So part of this system, of course, is developing your own abilities to decode the patient's symptoms because they're, it's usually hidden. I mean, if it wasn't hidden, they probably would have resolved it by now. So it's being a bit of a spiritual Sherlock Holmes, knowing how to get this and how to get it quickly. Like when I was with these people in Dallas, I didn't have a long time to talk to them about their childhood and their past. And all. I had to learn how to grasp what that was and help them to do some visualization or healing statements. I'd say, like, repeat after me, and I would have them say some statements. And I always say, only repeat these statements if they feel right to you, you know, respecting their own autonomy, of course. And so I basically was having them say some statements that I intuitively was guided to have them say. I'd be holding the probes on them with color light, and have them do that root level in just a few minutes, five minutes or something, five, ten minutes at the most, and then, and then do other microcurrent techniques to help them with their actual pain and issues. So if you want to improve your abilities in this way, which from the poll we had earlier, I think 90% of people wanted to do this, it means you have to keep working on yourself. We never get to the point where we have all our, our inner child is perfectly loved and, you know, our own. Because basically, the deeper you go into being a healer, the more of your own deep ancestral roots of your own contradictions come up. And it takes even more um, self-care to be able to keep taking care of yourself. So the people that don't acknowledge that are the ones that get sick. That's what I've found. You know, my colleagues who aren't don't take the time to really work on their own stuff coming up and get the support they need. You know, usually it manifests in their physical body, and that's you know, always sad when I see that. But it can be reversed in most cases, fortunately. Okay, so let's move on here. So in the microcurrent deep release system, color light therapy is used to balance the chakras and the autonomic um, regulation points on the back. And you can combine this, and then there's, of course, a series of symptomatic techniques. And we also integrate FSM or FST in this. So in other words, you learn how to use, when to use pads running series of frequencies with the probe work and these other things we're talking about. So it can be performed with non-needle microlite only, or it can be combined with acupuncture or other modalities. So here's an overview of this deep release system, is that the root treatment is balancing the chakras, doing mushu for the organs, and the autonomic balancing, which I often call tutti frutti. Now here's the challenge. How do you do this in a short amount of time? You know, I've sometimes have spent really a long time going through these techniques. Sometimes it could take me an hour to do this in the past. So what I've had to train myself to do is, again, learn how to do this root treatment quickly. And that's what I'd love to help you with. And that's what we'll be doing at that seminar. And then, then I call the toolkit all the other techniques which I do with the Accutron, which are good for relieving symptoms rapidly. And basically, you do them briefly. You see which ones work. You use an inductive process. And you learn how to hone your skills so you can just get through it. You can just get people feeling better and learn what's going to work for them in a short period of time. But then um, I don't use it with all my patients, but on some of them that need it, I'll put on the pads and maybe run the concussion protocol or some of the uh, solfeggio frequencies or frequencies specifically for anti-inflammatory work. You know, any of you that do FSM, you already know this stuff. And then during this whole time, what's really important and which is less tangible is the energy field that, that I'm facilitating around that patient and around our encounter. So it really feels like there's almost like a bubble of a loving golden energy in that treatment room, but I have to actually request it. It doesn't happen automatically. You have to invoke it. You have to specifically you know, request it to be there. And it's also <laughs> very important to clear the room after each patient so you have a fresh start, like anything that's lingering from the last patient is removed. That's called a purity blast. 
to do that after each patient. So this is basically the system. And until recently, I wasn't sure I could teach it to other people because it was so personal. But now, I, after being in Dallas, I was explaining what I was doing to the doctors there, and I realized, hey, I can, I can teach this. I can explain this to others in a very concise, logical progression. So that's what I'm you know, looking forward to doing. So here's a few stories from some of these people I've been working with recently to maybe you know, make it more practical in your minds what I'm talking about. Joe P. was a man that came to Dallas, a guy probably in his late 50s, and he had had some severe herniated disc injuries about 10 years ago, so he was dealing with severe chronic back pain, and sometimes he was better, sometimes he was worse, but he never got totally better from it. And then last November, 2016, he was driving and was hit by a tractor trailer truck. And he was really had terrible injuries. He survived that. And he was actually pretty lucky because, I mean, he didn't end up with huge physical trauma as much as he could, but in terms of like you know, losing a leg or anything like that, but he did end up with the back pain was really amplified. He ended up with shoulder and neck pain. It was really bad. But the worst thing for him was nonstop killer headaches that never stopped, that were really bad. And so from November until April when I saw him, he had, of course, tried many kinds of medical treatment, and nothing had taken those headaches away. He had gotten injections, he had acupuncture, he had gotten different kinds of medications. So I did the first treatment I did with him, which was spinal autonomic balance, uh, balancing his chakras, having him say some healing statements with me and then doing some of the symptomatic microlight techniques. Um, he, his headache completely vanished. Um, his pain levels went way down, and he actually, if you look at that testimonial video on the uh, East-West Seminars uh, seminar page, he, he was basically saying he walked all the way to his hotel room. Um, he had never been able to do that in years without any pain, and you know, he was just really, really happy. So I treated him two more times while I was in Dallas, it kept getting better. And then I emailed him two weeks later to see how he was doing. And he said the headaches had never come back. His pain in his body was still about 80, 85% better. What had not improved was the sense of disorientation and dissociation he had since the accident. So that would have taken more sessions to totally heal that. But the pain level, he was so happy you know, about that. Um, one woman I just treated last week, who's actually a scientist in my clinic here, Meredith, I'm, I'm changing some of these names, but her confidentiality, basically pretty healthy. She didn't have too many problems. She mainly wanted to experience the biofield healing and to, because um, she does, she's a, she researches this scientifically about the biofield. So she basically just had some pain in her groin, in her inguinal crease that had never gone away for years, because she's a dancer, very tall uh, person. And so she had not found a solution for that. So I did my check, checked her organs, and found her liver was really imbalanced. Kidney was a little bit imbalanced. So I used the Mushu technique to rebalance with color light therapy, green color on the liver and um, magenta light on the kidney. That took about two or three minutes. Got those balanced. And then did um, some local and distal work from her inguinal crease down to some distal points on her leg using the microlight polarized probes. And um, she had total relief of the pain for the first time in years. Plus, because of the biofield healing, she felt very expanded and uplifted and was just really, um, you know, really happy for that treatment. So that's somebody just a few days ago. Cecilia was one of the women who was also in Dallas who I met. She was from Latin America, so there was a little bit of a language barrier. She had really bad neck pain that she had had for many years and had not found any help with that. So you know, all these people had to pay for their own flight to fly to Dallas to receive these treatments. So they were all pretty motivated. And she had the spiritual conflict because she had grown up in a very devout Catholic family where there was some abusive stuff going on. And then she completely broke away from religion. But then she started missing her spirituality, so she was kind of divided about this. So during, I only treated her two times, and at the end she told me, and she's also on that testimonial video, that she said, first of all, her neck pain was, was gone. She was, first time she had felt relief in that in such a long time. But she also felt more at peace about her spirituality, like she was able to acknowledge that she had this connection inside herself to her own source. She didn't need all the 
Catholic dogmas, but that she was no longer rejecting it and felt closer to Jesus in a sense that it was not about dogma anymore. It was more like a personal thing. So she felt that's what happened with her just from those two 20-minute treatments. And then Joan is a woman I've um, worked with recently with pancreatic cancer. I've had a few of them. And uh, this is kind of early stage early on in the treatment, but basically with her situation, she has an aging mother who is in her 80s or 90s, who is very negative, very emotional, high maintenance. And Joan actually said to me that, you know, I don't think I can fully heal until my mother passes on because, you know, we have this certain relationship with her. So again, she had created that disease as a solution in some way. I can't explain it fully now, but but anyway, these are some of the people that I work with, and it's a it's a bit of a challenge to decode their issues. You know, it takes a lot to get in there to do that, but that's the challenge. So, um, FST or FSM is using series of frequencies run through parts of the body, or sometimes run through the whole body with wet towels to target the tissues and the conditions that are going on. And so again, this is this is part that I'll um, you know, be teaching you how to integrate that with some of these other things. And then uh, PNE balancing, that's come a long way. Again, the whole key I have now is how to you know, understand which chakras need balancing and how to balance them really quickly using the probes, kind of like you see in this picture. Learning which color they need, that's really, really key. And then um, I often have people do toning with me so that they are very engaged in balancing their own chakras. I'm not just doing it to them. Essential oils are also really helpful with that. And then ha leading them through healing statements that are helping them unwind the kind of congested energy or beliefs that are associated with the chakra. And then combining it with acupuncture points that have um, reinforcing effects. So each one of these chakras or PNE centers coordinates the organs, glands, nerve plexi, and emotional qualities of its associated region. Now, I've seen some people raise their hand, but I'm not seeing actually how to. Okay, here let's see what this. Not sure. Okay, so um, I see Daya. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing your name right, raised um, your hand. So the best thing is to use the chat because I'm not actually seeing, and um, somebody else did too, I'm not seeing how to directly answer you if you typed anything in. So if you use the chat, I'd be, I can actually see your question or comment better. Okay, so applications of this PNE balancing would be a key treatment for psychosomatic disease and pain. It increases the effectiveness of chronic pain treatment. It supports internal disease treatments, including hard to diagnose diseases. It's really helpful for autoimmune disorders, which again, autoimmune disorders, when the body attacks itself, there's a consciousness reason for it. It's not just a random thing that comes out of the blue. It's, in, it's some form of a solution to some deep conflict that person has. It helps clear the psyche and emotions. It's great for um, addiction type treatments and it enhances brain function. These are all things that balancing the chakras can do. One of the methods that we'll be going over in the seminar is a method for releasing phobias and trauma that I use really frequently in my practice. It's based on using bilateral acupuncture points that are treated with colors, frequencies, using the probes, while you lead the patients through a certain sense of um, visualizations. It's very, very powerful. One of the uh, people that developed the system and to a very high level um, is uh, Dr. Nevins from Maine, and he bought an Accutron for me about almost 10 years ago. And he's learned um, how to, he, he mostly works with people who are veterans who have very severe PTSD issues or rape victims. And he, work, you know, he has the really heavy duty psychological people coming in, seeing him. And he, um, he's using the Accutron on bilateral points having them visualize some things about their trauma. And he has, there's a whole sequence of how to do this. And I do this system too. In my, I've done it my own version of it. And what he was saying is that 
people that have these severe, they're having nightmares, flashbacks, avoidances of things in life, substance abuse, that after one session with his method, they, those things go away permanently. Now, if they have multiple traumatic memories, he has to do one session for each one of those traumatic memories. And so I've been experiencing that as well, working with people with severe um, you know, PTSD and phobias, and that once somebody gets this treatment, that aspect of it seems to be, <laughs> seems to be diffused out of their experience. They can still remember the thing, but it doesn't have the same control over them. So this all has to do with the amygdala and the hippocampus, which stores the memories, and the amygdala, which actually puts the, um, the glandular system into high alert and gets the adrenal glands pumping adrenaline and all that. Again, another thing that we'll be teaching what, during one of the days of the seminar is a basic protocol that helps you address neuromuscular degenerative conditions. It's part of the deep release system. And so again, some of the, a lot of the techniques are very similar and overlapping for pain release or for these um, neuromuscular conditions you see here on the slide. But once you learn the basic protocol, you can apply it flexibly and people need, you know, just need a lot of sessions. And you, as you treat them, you learn which treatments are working the best and which ones are not just by the way they observe, the way that they react. So by attending the LA seminar, and by the way, you can attend the LA seminar two ways. You can show up in person, which is I think the best way, in July 28th, 29th, 30th. If it's really too difficult for you to get there, we're also sending it by Zoom conference, which means you can do it through your computer, and you still get CEUs if you're an acupuncturist. You just have to attend live while the actual event is going on. And so you, you also get CEUs. You get CEUs where they show up in person or if you do it through the computer. So if you do it through the computer, it means that during the hours of the seminar, you need to be watching it and then inviting some people in that you can do hands-on practice with during the sessions where we're doing hands-on practice at the live event. And that way you're fulfilling the seminar the same way as people live. So either way, um, you can do it. And here's the benefits I feel you can have by participating in this seminar is finding new inspiration in your work by integrating the power of vibrational medicine and consciousness healing. And if you're already doing that, to go to the next level of what you can do with that. You know, we always can go to the next level with this kind of thing. And significantly improve your results, especially for clients with challenging and hard to treat chronic pain and health problems. You can serve more people in your community at a higher level because you're you know, learning how to help them with this more core level of what they're doing. And also increasing your own openness to your direct healing and intuitive abilities. I bet that every person on this webinar already has healing and intuitive abilities that you're using. I have no doubt about that. Like I said, um, we're at a time where we can definitely be expanding that. And I know for me that's a high priority. But then there's a whole package deal. If you want to expand your healing abilities, you need to also work on your own self-healing and often goes along with that healing your relationship with money even more and more. So that goes back to those four elements of mastery. And you're going to hear more information this summer about the new program I'm creating called the Bridge to Mastery, which is actually a program of having some live events and some online events to support you finding out where your weaker areas are of the four pillars of mastery and then developing them so that you can be in balance, balanced mastery, which includes being more healthy, if that's an issue, taking care of your own emotional needs, increasing your ability to be a channel for energy, and continuing to learn the best protocols. That's a really exciting project. And yeah, I'm 65 and, are, and still creating these big projects. What can I say? Can't help it. So we're getting near the end here, and again, if there's any other questions or comments, I have time here to stay and to talk with you. I know a few people raised their hand, and unfortunately, I couldn't see how to um, see if you type something in, how to see that, but I can do that now if you just go to the chat and click that, say that you have something you want to discuss. Okay, we have somebody here. Okay, well, Joanne just said, if you have any questions about the seminar, live or remote, give me a call and 
basically, um, you could look in your chat and see Joanne's phone number. She just shared it with everybody, 424-262-9289. She's helping with the seminar. She'll be there, which I'm very grateful for. You can also email her at joanne at eastwestseminars.com to get more information or to ask questions or register. Okay. I saw that Tina um, said raised hand, but again, you'll need to use the chat because I'm not able to see um, anything you type under the raise hand part, but I can see it if you put it into the chat. Oh, joanne at eastwestmed.com. Okay, that's the correct email, not eastwestseminars.com. Okay. Okay, now there's one more poll that I'm going to do here just to just to, to close this out here. Let's see. Okay, here it is. Okay, I'm going to put another poll on here. How would you rate your current ability to understand the root causes of your patient's disorders and be able to effectively help them release it? This would be a little voting. Again, it's anonymous, so I don't know who your names are, but why don't you let us know that if you're still on here? In other words, you, you can vote. Just choose one answer here. Thank you for voting. I see a lot of people are doing the voting now. Okay, so as far as the voting we have so far, what we have is 20% of the people say, I can do this well already. Um, Forty percent said sometimes I'm right on, but a lot of the time it mystifies me. Forty percent said I certainly need more help with this, and nobody said who cares. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you the results. So you can see it for yourself here. So now you can see the um, the results of the poll on your own screen. Well, I think what that tells me is that for any of you that feel like you it mystifies you or you need more help, here's an opportunity to get some help with this. Really what we're going to be doing at the seminar is almost all hands-on. It's not going to be a whole, there's not going to be much lecture. You know, there'll be the, just enough lecture to present what the, and demonstrate what the techniques are and we're mostly going to be working on each other. And it's going to be a lot of guidance and a lot of also developing your own innate abilities and getting a lot of support. You know, a lot of times it's just being around people who are also doing it that support you. And like, you know, children that grow up in families where their parents are healers or psychics tend to be healers or psychics because they get permission at a young age to allow that part of themselves to be expressed. You know, people that grow up in families where it's all left brain or they're very skeptical or, you know, negative toward that stuff, then they tend to be that way. Now, I'm an exception. I'm the black sheep of my family because no one in my family ever talked about healing and spirituality or any of this stuff. I grew up in a kind of like agnostic, atheistic Jewish family where we celebrated the holidays, but there was no spiritual content to it or anything. So I developed it on my own. Nobody, But for most people, it, so by, when you're in a group of people, like we'll be at our seminar, it's like you're, get, you're supported. We're, we're, you're supported bringing that part of you out. And you can make some pretty big shifts in those three days. So it's not just about left brain learning of techniques. It's that plus your own cultivation of your own abilities here. So anyway, that I think there looks like there might be one question over here that I might be able to open up questions and answer it. Okay, somebody said, do you have any plans for Hawaii? Well, actually, I was in Hawaii last September doing biofield healing. But I have not done a seminar there. Um, you know, my stock answer is that if you are in Hawaii and you want to help me organize a seminar there and help me bring people, then I would consider doing it. Um, so whoever that is, you're welcome to email me. 
dstarwin at eastwestmed.com. I'll put that in the chat, so if anyone wants to contact me, you can say chat. I'm going to put my email address. Okay, so I just shared my email address in the chat. So if anyone wants to invite me somewhere for a seminar, you know, and you can help me market it and get human beings there, I'm open to talking about it and possibly do it. But I, I like to go to Hawaii. Um, yeah, the last two times I've gone was actually to do healing sessions, not to actually teach a seminar. Okay, well, anyway, one more thing I want to tell you for those who are still on here is that the early registration discount expired on the LA seminar, which was saving $50. And the, the, even the full registration is very reasonable compared to most seminars like this. It's only $495 for all three days for 23 CEUs, which is right, very reasonable. So many of these kind of high-level seminars are eight or $900, $1,500. But still, I, I offered another $50 off, and that expired over a week ago. But there is a code that you could use. I'm going to put it into the chat that is good for a little bit longer that allows you to still get that early registration discount. And I'm going to type it in here right now. So if you look in the chat, you can see what it is. So if you want to register in the next few days, if you put this into the shopping cart, you'll actually get $50 off. So it would be just $4.45 for all three days. Whether it's the same thing, whether you do it remotely or you show up in person in LA. And you get the CEUs either way if you're an acupuncturist. Anyway, I hope you have a really great weekend. And um, again, you know, if you're interested, uh, contact Joanne. She has been doing a wonderful job um, helping me, and she'll be there at the seminar. And I know people love seeing her, so you'll get to connect with her again. So have a really good weekend, whatever you're doing, and thank you for coming on this Saturday morning. Be with me.